been before and welcome to the first, if this is your first time, I'm Zena and I am the face of From the She Shed France. For those of you who've been before, you will know that I am neither in the she shed nor in my kitchen. I'm actually in the UK at the moment, visiting family for various reasons, and so I'm actually doing a video whilst I'm here. So today, what I'm going to be making is some galettes, which are a form of French pancake. Now, the ones that you're probably most familiar with are the crepes that are made with ordinary flour. Galettes are very popular in northern France, particularly Brittany where I live, and in Normandy. And they are made with buckwheat flour instead, and which gives them a firmer texture and a sort of nuttier taste. Now often they're used as savoury pancakes, but they can be used as sweet pancakes as well. And today, since I'm staying with one of my boys, and he's got a little bit of a sweet tooth, we thought we'd make some caramelised apple with caramel bear salé, which is a um, salted butter caramel, and our galettes. So that is what I'm going to be making with you today. I'm going to start by making my galettes. Now, as always, I will put written instructions in the box below with all the ingredients and the measurements and so on. So don't worry too much if you lose track at this stage. But I'm going to go through it fairly slowly and hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So I'm starting with my 100 grams of buckwheat flour. Now, I'm putting that into a bowl along with a good pinch of salt. Now if I was at home I'd use sea, sea salt, as you all know, that's my favourite, but you know, when you're travelling you take what you can. So the salt, now give that a good mix in at that, this stage, just mix it with your hands, it's fine. Also my buckwheat flour has got slightly clumpy, so it's a good opportunity for me to break those clumps up. They're coming away nicely now, it's very smooth. Um, as I would expect from any other flour. When I'm happy with that, the next thing I'm going to do is make a well in the centre and break an egg into it. So I'm happy there. Right. Here is my egg. It doesn't want to break in the centre of my flour. Now I have 300 mils of milk and at this stage I'm going to put about half of that in. I've got a whisk as you can see and I'm going to give this a really good whisk. And what you'll see is it's coming together really nicely already. nearly there makes a nice batter now what I one of the reasons I'm doing this first is that I like to allow my batter to stand some recipes say you do need to some say you don't need to I'm somebody who's just got into the habit of allowing my batter to stand so now you'll see I have a very thin batter there and I'm just going to leave that for a little while while I get on with some of the other things. I'm about to start making the caramelised apples and so I've got three apples, I've got some butter and I've got some brown sugar and what I'm going to do is uh, peel and core my apples and place them in a frying pan over a medium heat with the butter and the sugar. I've sliced all my apples and I'm going to put them into the frying pan now. And what you might not be able to see is that the burner at the back there is on a very low heat. Now, you can use any sort of apple. 
for this. What you'll find though is obviously if you have a softer apple, which these are, they may well fall about a part of it and they might actually not hold their shape quite as much as you would like. Um, good knob of butter on top. And then three, um, I'm going with dessert spoons because I haven't got a tablespoon. I can normally do about three tablespoons. So I'm just going to do three goodly heaped dessert spoons and I'm going to put that on a medium heat and all of it will start to cook and to caramelise so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Whilst the apples are caramelising over there I'm starting to make my caramel bear salad and I have 100 grams of sugar. You can use brown sugar, you can use white sugar, whichever you've got to hand. And the first thing you're going to do is put the sugar in your saucepan and then put it onto a low heat on its own to start melting. And literally, that's all I'm doing for a moment. There isn't really anything you need to be doing at this stage, but what I do do is give my apples and sugar mixture a bit of a shake from time to time. I don't want, although I want them caramelised, I don't want them really sticking to the bottom of the pan. I'm just allowing things to start to melt before they become nice and sticky. So do actually just keep an eye on things. I'm not saying you need to do very much at this stage, but just keep an eye on it. I've turned the heat up slightly on the apples now because the sugar and the butter have melted and what I actually want them to do is to actually caramelise so I want to lose a bit of that and so actually getting the steam away from it will help. The sugar here is almost melted, there's just a few lumps left and as soon as that's melted then I should be adding my salted butter which I've got 40 grams of here and my 200 ml of cream and then I shall be just cooking it a little to actually allow it to thicken. So I think we're almost there with the sugar now. I'm certainly thinking that the apples are starting to look quite good. Yeah, I just want to be sure my sugar has completely melted. A lot of the recipes say that you don't need to stir, you can just leave it. I'm a bit of a one for making sure things aren't sticking, so I tend to give it a bit of a stir as it's going on. Now then, um, it's a good idea if you chop your butter a little before you put it in. So I just wanted you to see sort of roughly what 40 grams looked like. And now I'm adding my butter and the sugar, all despite the fact that it's on a very low heat, is actually really fizzing now, as you can hear, as that goes in. And now I'm going to be adding some cream as well. Just to put together without going into too much of a horrible mess. And one of my son's cats has arrived to uh, join in. Not quite sure what he thinks is happening, but he's not too happy with the situation. So I'm going to give this a really good stir because the, the sugar has gone a bit thick on its own and not part of the rest of the conglomeration. So. At that stage, you might want to take it off the heat for a minute and just really give it a beat. So I had a bit of a disaster just now. When I added all my butter and my um, cream, the uh, sugar solidified in the middle. I had this hard lump. Now, if that happens, actually what you've got to do is be brave and turn the heat up. Once you turn it up, the sugar will melt again um, and you will then get a sauce consistency. So I have had to do that. That was actually bringing it back up to the boil was a bit unnerving, but I've done it. 
and I'm going to take it off the heat now um, and just lift my spoon up and what you'll see is I've got a lovely running consistency. Now uh, you can actually put this in a sterilised jar and keep it in the fridge for up to three weeks. I don't think mine's going to last that long. But um, so I have now got my caramel there, Sale. Um, I'm just going to turn that burner off before I burn myself. I have my apples that are looking really nicely caramelised now. Lovely um, caramel and um, sugar and butter sauce over those apples. I'm just going to give them a few more minutes on a high heat to really caramelise. And then I'm going to cook a galette. One of the things lots of recipes say and I like to do is to add some melted butter to your pancake mixture. So I've just got a good knob of butter and I'm going to put it in the microwave and turn it to a liquid. So I've melted the butter in the microwave and it's a liquid now. I'm beating it into my batter mixture. You will see that I've also got a pan on with a... You can use oil, whatever you want. I've got some butter to hand, so I'm using butter today. Make sure that you get your pan really hot. That's the mistake people make when making pancakes, is they don't get their pans hot enough. And you really have got to get it to a smoking heat. Um, my apples weren't caramelising enough, so I've put them onto a, a bigger burner, and I've really turned the heat up on them now. So you can see they're bubbling away. And in a minute, I'm going to start the process of frying a galette. So I'm about to cook off my first galette. You can see that the pan is really smoking hot. I've got a ladle full of butter. I'm actually going to take the pan to the butter. And one of the things about doing these is you do want it to be very thin. So... It does look as though I haven't put enough batter in, but actually I probably have, well maybe I need just that tiny bit more to fill those tiny bits of holes. But that is more than enough. And you'll see that immediately that the, the um, galette is in the pan, you're, you've got air bubbles happening. And that's where the heat is coming up through your galette. So I'm going to give it a, a couple more minutes yet. I want it to really solidify. And obviously having added that last extra bit of batter. Um, it's not quite cooking yet. It's nearly there. Um, I just use an ordinary knife. Any sort of knife like this will work. You just keep it running under your galette from time to time so that it's not sticking to the pan, so that when you come to turn it over and cook the other side, which we're going to do in just a moment, it won't have stuck. I don't do any of this fancy flipping it in the air. Um, it literally is a case that I'm going to get it on my knife and over. And now my second side of my galette is cooking. Um, and when that's done, I'll plate it up and show you what it's going to look like. I'm going to start the process of plating up my galette now. Um, you can see it's been cooked on both sides. One of the wonderful things about galettes is because they're made with buckwheat flour, if, like me, you're gluten intolerant, you can actually eat them. And that makes a huge difference. It also, it doesn't mean that you're having something different from everybody else. You're having the same. So, I've made my galette. And now I am going to put some toppings on top. So I've got my caramelised apples, which are very sticky and hot. So if you eat this straight away, just be careful, particularly if you're feeding it to children, about the temperature of the apples, because they will hold the heat for a while. So... You can see I've actually ended up with more of a toffee apple almost. I probably slightly overcooked this. And then I'm going to add a little of my caramel sauce, which is actually beautifully now 
dropping consistency. And I'm going to fold my goette and then put a little bit more of the sauce across the top. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please think about subscribing to the channel. Give me a thumbs up to show you've liked it. And remember to ring that bell and that way every time I upload a new video, you'll know. Until then, I'm going to enjoy this galette and I'm going to share it with my son.